there are some legendary commanders in rise of kingdoms that desperately need a buff so today we're gonna talk about it what's going on guys cheers <coughs> had to break out the hot sauce because today's video is going to get a little bit spicy okay now look i know what you're thinking julius caesar is on the screen and to keep this video interesting i have limited myself to only two commanders from the first season of kvk okay because realistically even with the museum buffs that we got with with all the relics we got last year for these commanders a lot of these commanders still need really big buffs in order to make them usable and i think that would make a very boring video okay if i just went through and said all the commanders that you know need a buff like that's that's lame okay i tried to pick a few commanders from all seasons of the game although i will say most of the commanders here came out a while ago with all that being said and with my mouth still on fire from the hot sauce let's jump into number 10 and by the way this list is going to go from commanders that need a buff the least to commanders that need the buff the most so this first commander that we're going to talk about is the one that needs the buff the least on this list and that's alexander the great and i told you i told you this video was going to be spicy look it's so spicy my heater just came on actually it came on because it's 23 degrees here in new york and it was six this morning when i woke up i'm so sick of winter anyway alexander the great number 10 on the list yes i think in fact that alexander the great needs a buff in rise of kingdoms now why is this is it because alexander the great is a bad commander no i think alexander the great needs a buff for the community we need a buff for alexander the great for all the free to play players for all the players that spent time and effort getting this commander expertise this would be a hat tip to them saying thanks for sticking with rise of kingdoms so long we're gonna make that investment that you made worthwhile that's why rise of kingdoms needs to make alexander the great great again okay now here's the thing with alex okay his active skill it's a shield okay it's a shield and when he's expertise the debuff here is pretty powerful three enemy troops take 30 percent increased damage for four seconds very powerful debuff very useful 1700 direct damage factor which is pretty good immunity to damage reduction and healing effect reduction great we get 30 percent march speed love that for infantry 30 percent infantry attack and then 40 percent more attack when he doesn't have a shield up 30 percent defense when he does okay this is all this is all vanilla this is all good but when you compare him to commanders like cpo he's just better guan yu just better harold i mean look at look at look at your boy harold okay i'm not gonna say harold is better than alex but like he as as far as like damage output I feel like he's better, man. I, I I just do. As an overall complete package, is Alexander the Great better than Harold? I think you might be able to make that make that uh, argument. But I mean, really, what are we looking at here? Okay, we're seeing a ton of infantry attack, which uh, we know that that has not aged well. Okay, maybe back when Alex first came out, that was great. Uh, but right now, there's a million different ways to gain attack in the game, and a, a, attack for infantry is just not that great anymore. Even if it is 70, percent okay, and that 1700 damage factor. That used to be higher than Cao Cao's expertise on his on his first skill, 1400. Okay, so yeah, when Alex came out, that's insane. But look at Tark. Okay, Tark is our latest infantry commander, 2200. Boom, massive hit right there, and there's an additional damage factor as well. Plus, he gains 15% increased damage. I mean, Tark, I wouldn't even say is one of the best open field commanders in the game, and yet he's still gaining a ton of infantry attack. He's still gaining a little bit of march speed, which is nice, and then all damage with the debuff and a big active like alex okay has his his shine has been tarnished just a little bit by a lot of these new commanders that came into the game and i feel like he's one of those commanders and the reason that he's so low on this list is because he is still very good and i think a solid buff nothing crazy but nothing too weak either we don't want a richard uh relic for alex okay we want like a solid med buff for alex okay you give alex 20 percent infantry health and 10 percent more march speed or something like that and we're popping off boys okay i want to see a nice little solid middle ground buff for alexander the great and i feel like the community at large would love this i don't think anybody would complain about that and i do think you could make the case that he does actually need it to keep up with these season of conquest commanders moving on to number nine on the list we have saladin okay i think saladin needs the buff slightly more than alexander and here's why okay first of all he's not dealing as much damage he's got 1400 single target damage which is lower than the 1700 on alexander the great second skill now of course this is an active skill whereas the second skill for alex is a 10 percent chance but even still law of averages over time you'll probably deal it about the same amount and there's a 30 percent healing effect reduction which guess what 
uh, Alex has that as well on his second skill. Now there's also a March speed reduction here. We gain a little bit better on the stat stat front I would say because you get 20 percent defense which is better 20 percent attack is fine and the the best part here is the tankiness 30 percent less skill damage across the board forever and 20 percent reduced counter attack damage taken is just great okay the tankiness here we love this about Saladin and at the end of the day he's still a great commander he's still an insanely good value at 5551 but there's been so many good cavalry commanders that have come into the game look at Alexander Nevsky just look at Nevsky okay this dude is basically Saladin on steroids if you compare their skills even the active skill 2300 dude with the defense reduction that's actually insane but it doesn't stop there boys because yes we got William okay William is incredible but don't forget Zhang Yu and also Joan of Arc Prime is in the game now this is a 2000 damage factor AoE as opposed to the 1400 on Saladin's single target okay and this also has a debuff so you can't even make the argument Joan of Arc Prime is just incredible she's very very good and I just think Saladin while he's still solid he can't compete he can't really find himself in in the five army lineup like he used to be okay and this is one of those commanders where yes he's still good but if we gave him a modest buff just a medium nice little sized buff I feel like that would do so much good for the community it would be so good for free to play players to buff an already solid commander that they probably already have and that is such a good value investment this would just be it would make so many people happy if this commander if Saladin got a solid buff here in rise of kingdoms now the good news is that both Saladin and Alexander the Great are season two commanders and there's a really good chance that we're going to be seeing the relics for these commanders coming within the next couple of months here in rise of kingdoms I would say hopefully within the next two to four months we see relics for these commanders that's my best guess that's what I'm hoping I have no insider knowledge now we're going to start to get into a little bit of the doo-doo okay we're going to be starting to get into a little bit of the uh the commanders that I feel like are, are definitely outclassed so moving on we're going to talk about Ramses okay now am I here to say that Ramses is worse than Alex and Saladin I'm not saying that okay I'm not saying that he also deals 1600 damage factor he has a really nice defense reduction you're gaining attack you're taking 30 percent less skill damage which is one of the great things about Saladin as well and realistically he just he kind of he feels a little bit like Saladin okay and here's the thing yes he gets 40 percent defense but it's a 10 percent chance okay there's some things about Ramses that that are good okay but hear me out okay Ramses is a season of conquest commander he's season of conquest which means he comes around your your ability to get Ramses okay comes around at the same time that you have the ability to get Henry which hello 2300 damage factor to a single target on one turn that's more damage than Ramses does expertise over two turns okay it's ridiculous we also get Gilgamesh at the same time Gilgamesh guess what doesn't deal as much damage but a 30 percent health reduction even more powerful and we gain archer health it's all the time and then we also have to consider commanders like Nebu right Nebu has 1500 AoE that's a five target AOE with 30% defense. And we haven't even talked about the fact that Boudicca comes at the same time in the season of conquest. I think people are afraid to say that Ramses needs a buff because when he came out, he was so good, but realistically right now, he's just outclassed by so many different archers that you get access to at the exact same time. I mean, Boudicca, look at this 2,300 skill damage taken increased by 35%. That's a huge debuff by the way. And this is another wheel of fortune commander, but she also has the skill tree. So why would you then opt for a, a wheel of fortune commander that has the attack tree? That's just not as good. It's just dealing less damage. Like, it makes no sense why you would go for Ramses over a ton of other commanders. And I feel like as a season of conquest commander, right? We're not talking about Alex and Saladin anymore. I just feel like he needs something. He needs a little bit of a buff. Okay. He needs a little bit of love, a little bit of a reason to use him. All right. There's a heal immunity effect here. And this was very unique to him when he first came out. But I feel like now there's just so many things like not, not that that's not good anymore. But I mean, if you look at somebody like Gilgamesh, for example, where did he go? He has a blood craving D buff where he literally deals damage to enemies when they're healing okay so like if, in every metric it seems like Ramses is just outclassed by a lot of newer things and I would love to see him get a buff because just look at your boy he's covered in gold man look at him he's freaking sick looking his design is incredible show Ramsey some love moving on to number seven on the list we got to talk about Leonidas we got to talk about Leonidas because Dragothian was right he was right I know it you deep down you know it okay he was right Leonidas is ass okay he's ass and why is he ass because the damage factor here 
is pathetic even with the extra 50 percent if you throw him behind your guan yu but not not just that the speed of rage gained doesn't really move the needle let's be honest it doesn't really do that much it sounds great on paper but in practicality does it really move up the amount of turns that you're going to deal in active skill maybe in a long fight but not in brief open field fights which is really how you're using commanders like guan yu these days anyway the shield here is pathetic and it's only under 50 percent which you're pretty much never going to be and this increased damage here is finicky it really it just is okay it sounds good 10 percent increased damage it sounds great but you're, again you're not going to be in super long fights with leonidas you're just not and and the worst part okay about all this is that there's no march speed here so your your guan yu is going to be a sitting duck in the open field he's going to get swarmed down immediately because he was going to get swarmed anyway but now his chances of getting away are zero because you put a leonidas behind him okay so leonidas realistically one of the coolest designs in the entire game but desperately needs a buff because guys this is another season of conquest commander back in the day when he came out you could use him in season three of kvk very good at this point not he's not a season of conquest commander let's be real he is on par he's worse in my opinion than alex and saladin okay and this is supposed to be a season of conquest commander his synergy with guan yu has faded okay it's faded because there's so many better options we have cpo prime we have sargon of course we have Tarek. these are just better commanders to pair with your guan yu these days and i don't even think Tarek is a great pair with guan yu but i still would rather him than leonidas that's just that's my opinion five five one one Tark, I think is probably better than a five five one one uh, Leonidas okay again not saying there's a good pair but like look at this 2200 damage factor 10 percent more damage to calves 40 percent extra attack five percent bonus damage this is a da bonus damage that you just get flat with a debuff of rage like it's just it's just good man Leonidas needs a thick uh he needs a fat buff okay he needs a fat buff uh you know it I know it everyone knows it moving on to number six we have none other than Theodora Theodora man she is she's great for defending your city and that's pretty much it and guess what you should never build a commander just for city defense and you also shouldn't probably ever take city rallies and even if you did you probably could defend pretty well with something else without having to go and invest in an entire commander okay the thing about theodora is there was a lot of hype around her when she came out because she came out at the same time as yss who is an incredible commander and for a moment it was a very good mixed garrison okay and honestly you might be able to make the case that it still is but realistically looking at theodora now okay it's a five target aoe it's circular you don't even have to expertise her to get that circle but everything else on her kit is just lackluster it just is it's not that much damage factor even if this was 1700 like it is for isong with the 50 percent bonus it still wouldn't be enough okay 10 percent attack what is that 10 percent defense really we're looking at other commanders in the game right now that just give flat 40%, 30% to everybody. I mean, look at this. When Honda is attacking, he just gives 40% to any troop type. And yet you're telling me that Theodora can only can only get 10%? When she's in a garrison, that's an even more limiting requirement for bonus stats. Sorry, that's the requirement for defense. But even still, in the open field, you won't even give her 10% defense? Like, what? Now, look, I get that she's removing all of the negative debuffs and all that stuff, and it does bump up her damage factor. That's fine, okay? That's fine. The expertise is, is good. But the stats here are not great. I mean, look at how you can tell that she's not as good as other commanders because look at how few text she has okay I mean that's just where we're at in the game right now okay look at Joan of Arc look at look at all this text look at all the look at look at all this it gets more and more complex because that's how power creep works okay Theodora is just vanilla damage and that just doesn't cut it anymore and again talk about a season of conquest commander here okay we're like it would make no sense to invest in this commander these days there's virtually no reason to do so and i think that kind of sucks right like yeah to have good commanders you have to also have bad commanders but you don't need to have something this bad i mean come on this is just like what are we even doing here moving on to number five on the list i have a commander that i didn't even unlock i didn't even unlock him that's how pathetic this commander is suleiman the first a season of conquest commander that is just absolutely useless didn't even bother i don't even have a single sculpture of your boy okay he's trash his design is ugly and he's so bad that i actually forgot what he does okay look at this 1300 damage factor literally less than Cao Cao. literally less than gold key commanders embarrassing now 60 percent reduction in stats very powerful two seconds kind of lame kind of lame you would have to double this i would say to at least four seconds before people even look at suleiman again okay 15 percent attack and defense okay 10 percent damage taken reduction outside of territory 
fine this third skill requires that you're attacking a city or stronghold for it to occur five percent more normal attack damage that's it and if you have a mixed army you gain 50 percent increased skill damage for three seconds if you take skill damage why is that i mean Yi song ye gets 50 percent bonus skill damage all the time no requirement doesn't matter it could be all archers it could be mixed army it doesn't matter you get all the time how come here there are two requirements one that you have at least two different unit types and two that you have had taken skill that like why is that a thing and here you're dealing more damage with the expertise but you're giving them rage you're making them pop their skills more like how is this a commander that came out in season of conquest it makes absolutely no sense this like it feels like they ran out of ideas and they were just like let's make a garbage commander and see what happens and guess what no one bought it and then behind them they put a mop why because he's he's basically a janitor he's not a warrior he's he's taking out the trash i will say though his golden robe is kind of lit i do like that robe a lot and the sword is is fire okay so there's there's some cool things about him but suleiman man desperately need like literally i would like to see them double all these and just see if anyone even uses them like surely that would be too powerful but like also maybe not like he might only just be usable if you doubled everything moving on to number four Wu Zetian. what's going on with Wu Zetian? okay when she came out and you saw her standing like a, like the literal god she is with her golden everything like it was intimidating to go up against a Wu Zetian when she came out and now a thousand damage factor pathetic amounts of healing 10 percent defense and health i mean there's potential in this kit but the numbers are just too low these days they're just too low she's been power crept out by a million other commanders i mean literally like every other garrison commander actually let's do this okay Zenobia, better garrison. YSS, better garrison. Artemisia, better garrison. Theodora, better garrison. And she was already on the list. Yadviga, better garrison. Flavius, better garrison. Amanatori, better garrison. Yanziska, better garrison. And that's saying a lot. Yanziska is not that good. People want to pretend like he is, but he's actually not that great. Same thing with Yadviga, kind of not that great. Okay. Okay. Now I'm, I'm just talking now, but you get my point. Okay. You, you get the point. Wu Zetian has been outclassed a million times over. Okay. There's no point to use her and they I mean don't you get her for winning KVK season two like congratulations you won KVK here's trash I will say though there is hope for Wu Zetian because just like Alexander and Saladin there's a chance that she can get a relic and that would be huge but it's got to be huge it's got to really be huge because she desperately needs there's got like you got to double the damage factors I there's, I don't know there's got to be a huge buff here because she's just too she's trash bro Genghis Khan is number three on the list because Genghis Khan look he is he desperately needs he needs help but here's the thing about Genghis Khan okay the thing about him is that historically Genghis Khan was like a big deal like he he's one of the most famous military generals and leaders in all of history of all of mankind okay there's some crazy statistic out there like that everybody is like seven percent related to Genghis Khan okay that's how big of a deal he is there are people watching this video who are related because of Genghis Khan that's that's crazy and yet in this game he's utter trash he's utter garbage he gets no stats how is that for a commander no stats and he's a season two commander hello 1700 damage factor we already talked about how alexander the great gets that for free on his second skill and his second skill prevents him from taking a damage reduction effects okay and there's like a, a healing debuff i get that his rage requirement is lower but like the vanilla damage here just doesn't cut it anymore and also if we compare him to somebody like zhang yu for example who also has an even lower rage requirement deals the same damage factor with the debuff and hit three targets i mean there's just no reason to ever use genghis khan he is outclassed by basically every other cavalry commander in the game and even if you look at somebody like Cao Cao or minamoto who came out before him they have relics now okay they have stats on the board khan does not have stats there's basically no reason to use him and i love when when I see players use him because it's free kills he's a glass cannon yes he's fast but if you actually start hitting him the March speed buff is removed and March speed is further reduced by 10 percent he slows himself down seriously like there's no room for him to be debuffing himself on a commander that's already so bad like you can remove that and still no one would use him but the fact that he's he's hurting his own chances of being it's it's ridiculous okay it's ridiculous and again another season two commander here I hope 
even like again even if they doubled everything here i really wonder if he would be used i really do i just i mean maybe right maybe i, I don't know genghis khan i think he has so much potential and he's such a prominent historical figure that he he just desperately needs a buff okay moving on to number two we're gonna start talking about the season one commanders okay i didn't want to fill the whole video with them because they're all pretty garbage but let's talk about freddy let's talk about freddy he's number two on the list he already got a relic okay he already got a relic and i still think he needs a buff more than everybody else we've already talked about in this video okay the damage over time even when expertise is not that great we have sargon now who just is just better a healing factor but it's a 10 percent chance and a cooldown all damage when hitting a city not even a flag not even a fortress only city damage okay and then troop capacity you would think with a commander that bad that they would give him an incredible relic and look they didn't okay they didn't they gave him 25 percent attack arguably the stat that we needed the least of on this commander and 10 percent skill damage reduction here's what i want to see double this lilith double it give him 50 percent attack and 20 percent skill damage taken reduction and then i i still feel like people won't use him i still feel that way man but maybe he could be a secondary somewhere i don't know but frederick is just so booty even with this relic that he's just he's just a space filler like i don't have him expertise but when i get him from gold keys i'm not even excited about it like that shouldn't be the case you shouldn't have a let how is he in the same class of commander as cpo prime and nevsky and Boudica prime like they're both legendary commanders it costs the same amount to level them up it costs the same like what what are we doing what are we talking about with frederick like what is going on here how is he so bad but but guys as bad as he is as much as he needs a buff he's not number one on the list and the reason for that is because of the existence of barca you you probably saw this coming and yes caesar's trash i know what you're thinking moctezuma also trash okay those are all predictable i wanted to save number one for something special and that's barca why is barca special okay not only does he also not have any stats no base stats on his kit his damage factor is even worse five second debuff solid okay it's a solid debuff but that's all that he does and the fact is a lot of the stuff here you need to have a mixed army third skill also only for hitting cities and it's a healing factor it's not even bonus damage or skill damage. there's nothing you get a if you're hitting a city you get to heal yourself so great you get to take more death like there's this this commander makes absolutely no sense but the worst part about Barca and the fact that makes him what makes him even worse than Frederick okay is that if we look at this look at this ready the same 25 percent extra attack as Frederick okay five percent normal attack damage reduction fine but what's the big difference between these two Barca is pay to win you have to spend hundreds of dollars to get Barca expertise and he is almost as bad as Freddy okay but the reason he's higher on the list than Freddy is because you have to pay money for him Lilith you're robbing people you are taking their money and spitting in their face and look i get some people are into that kind of thing but not me there is a perfectly good legendary commander here that i could get for a hundred bucks and as crazy as that sounds that's a good deal for a legendary and i'm opting out that's how bad he is people have spent hundreds of dollars on this commander only to have one of the worst commanders in the game it's actually absurd it's insane and then the relic that they give him is like the same or worse than frederick's relic how is that possible minamoto got a really solid buff he got a really solid relic and with barca like they needed to give him like 50 percent health 50 percent defense for people like even then maybe maybe i would look at him maybe maybe not okay and he's got the attack tree too like like what's going on with barca man he's complete garbage i need lilith i need you to go back to the drawing board think of a new relic for him start over with this dude re rework his whole kit i don't even care i don't even care okay give him a sixth skill okay make him the only commander with a sixth skill in the game i don't know what to do but barca just he needs a buff boys he needs a buff you know it i know it everyone knows it he's garbage anyway guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video hopefully you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it takes one second it's free and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm comment down below your thoughts on the 10 commanders that i think need a buff i had a little bit of fun with this one don't take it too seriously okay but i would love to know what commanders you think need a buff in the comment section down below while you're down there subscribe to the channel it's also free it also takes a second and consider clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys 
Thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.